Amanda Hansen here at the Action News 5 Digital Desk. You know it's Hispanic Heritage Month and we've been highlighting so many people here in the Memphis area that are doing such great things. And joining me back on the Digital Desk is Vivian Fernandez at Adamson with La Prensa Latina. And uh, Vivian, I know right now we have Jaime Escobar joining us here at the Digital Desk. Tell us a little bit more um, about his backstory because we talked about it on Friday uh, and it just sound, sounded like he was involved in so many different things and really giving back to the community. So I'm gonna let you dive in and kind of talk a little bit more about his role. Absolutely. Hi, Amanda. Yes. So uh, indeed, we're featuring so many Hispanic people during Hispanic Heritage Month uh, because of their contributions to the society, the culture, the economy, everything, right? And, you know, uh, Jaime is just a perfect example, you know, of, you know, what Hispanics do in this country. He's a pilot and he's a captain for JetBlue. And not only that, he's a mentor as well for an organization that is called OBAP uh, here in Tennessee. Actually, Mississippi, they have um, an academy in Olive Branch. And uh, he's doing so many things. So I think that the best person to tell everything about himself is Jaime. So uh, we're welcoming Jaime Escobar. Uh, and, you know, Jaime, welcome to this interview. And uh, please let us know a little bit more about you. Well, Amanda, Vivian, thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to have me on the show. Um, it really is an honor to uh, be spotlight um, as one of, you know, a, a Hispanic influence in the community. Um, as you mentioned earlier, I am a captain uh, for JetBlue Airways uh, out of New York City. Uh, not only that, but I also mentor the, uh, the youth in the community, uh, not just to be pilots, but pretty much to, to have the ability to dream and to live out that dream um just like i once had like you mentioned in your article uh in your news article earlier this week that uh since i was five years old my passion was to fly an aircraft and um we all have that idea that uh, aviation is an expensive career just like medicine just like uh, being a lawyer but uh if if you have that passion you have that drive um there's nothing to stop you uh, in my case, uh, I surrounded myself with good people that kind of paved the way for me to understand that if you try, uh, there's there's ways to do that, uh, to live out that dream. And I kind of gave it upon myself to give back, just like I once received from someone, and to make sure that those those uh, generations behind us have the ability to dream and play it out as as I did. Right. So not only you're a pilot, uh, you're a captain. Uh, when did you start being a uh, captain, excuse me, for JetBlue? So I've been a captain for JetBlue going on two years. Um, but this actually this past March, Mar March 5th, marked my 20th year flying. Um, wow. So I started flying very young uh, with that goal in mind to, to kind of uh, achieve what, I, what, I, what I've accomplished, uh, which is being a, a captain at a major airline. Um, you know, going around the world, uh, being blessed. I mean, it's just just a privilege, honestly. Uh, there's a saying that uh, if you choose a career um, and and you you pretty much set your mind to it, uh, you're never going to work uh, in your life. So I can I can truly say that I don't work. I just have a really good, good really good hobby, <laughs> pretty much. Well, that's a good way, you know, to describe what you do. You know, it actually does. You know, when we like what we do, uh, is we don't feel like we're working, really. Right, correct. So also, you mentioned when we talked before that uh, you're going to be a mentor as well for the ROTC program at the University of Memphis. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, please? Right. So uh, right now, uh, in the in the uh, Mid-South, on the western part of Tennessee, uh, we have out of Millington is the Civil Air Patrol, um, and it's pretty much a... It's funded uh, by the U.S. Air Force and also uh, from the private sector. And what we do is uh, it's, it's, it's a two-story uh, deal here. So the, you, the uh, Civil Air Patrol is tasked with um, search and rescue and uh, emergency response. So let's say there's a, if there's a tornado like there was a couple months ago in Covington. Uh, we are tasked with doing search and rescue from the air. Uh, we'll go out. We'll, scat, we'll help out the, uh, the ground personnel, try to look in places where they are not allowed to go due to the debris. But we are also tasked in the Civil Air Patrol to kind of promote um, 
education in, in terms of uh, aviation and just kind of giving that, giving that, uh, paving that road. So right now we've been funded to uh, join with the uh, ROTC in the area to bring those cadets uh, on board and ex have them come out to Millington, get on a plane and fly the aircraft. Uh, I'm the pilot in command. I'll take them up to about 1500 feet, 2000 feet in the area. And I'll just tell them, you know, this is going to be your, your first experience to, to what you're about to enroll in. So, and that's, you know, to me, that's a great way to give back, uh, let them know what they're about to do and, and make sure that that sparks that fire that's not going to go out and it's just going to, you know, push them all the way through. Absolutely. And also you're part of the rescue team here in West Tennessee as mm -hmm. well, right? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Uh, the other thing I'd like to mention is uh, you mentioned OBAP earlier. Uh, OBAP is a great organization, the Organization of Black Airspace Professionals. Um, it's, a, it's a great organization that we have, uh, not just in Tennessee, but it's actually nationwide. And okay. it, it focuses uh, on bringing the youth, uh, not just not just uh, the, the uh, African-American youth, but just minorities. You know, we have Asians, we have Hispanics, uh, any, anybody actually that wants to join. Um, we have a flight school down in Olive Branch, the uh, Luke Weather Flight Academy, and it uh, it provides that uh, that intro, that, that first step into into aviation at no cost. Um, it's all you know through the organization. It's something I suggest the uh, if you're really into aviation and you have that dream, uh, you guys should check out uh, you know uh, the Luke Weather Aviation Academy in Olive Branch. That's amazing. Well, Amanda, did you have any questions for Jaime? I would love to chat with you a little bit, if I may, because I think it's so interesting, your story. For one, you had this dream at the young age of five that this is what you wanted to do, and then you found a way to make it happen. And I get, I love that you're giving back. At what point in your career did you say, hey, this is something that I want to do. I want to get involved in these different organizations, because I kept thinking to myself as a pilot, um, it, it's a very uh, busy career. You're from here to there and, and elsewhere. I kept saying, how, when does he sleep? But at what point in your career did you say, hey, I really want to make sure that I'm investing in future pilots and letting people know that if this is something they want to do, it is obtainable? Well, most definitely. So uh, there used to be an airline in Memphis called Pinnacle Airlines. Um, and I got involved with some really good uh, colleagues in there, uh, Captain Chad Harris, Captain Chris Wilson, um, a lot of us uh, came together and we actually started this program. It was called the Mid-South Life Skills. And uh, the late Phil Trinari, who was the CEO of Pentacle at that time, uh, he kind of gave us that, that, uh, that boost in, in not only finance, but in morale to, to say, you know what, I'm here to support you guys reaching out to the community. So we actually put together this program where we would bring in every Wednesday uh, uh, kids from, um, it was from Wooddale High School and they would shadow uh, someone in the airline uh, operations sector. So uh, one week we had a kid would shadow someone in finance, one week someone would go out into a dispatch, and just seeing how motivated these kids were kind of put that in me. It's like, you know what, if we could do this here just on the airline level, I wanna go out and reach out to the community, to other schools, and uh, you know try to grow this program. Um, and then once I left Pinnacle, uh, I kind of got involved with JetBlue. JetBlue is a, is a company that is also very uh, heavy into the community involvement. Um, unfortunately, we don't operate in Memphis, so we don't have that much outreach in Memphis, but in New York, uh, in Florida, uh, there's a lot of outreach from JetBlue. And they've also been able to sponsor me some of the stuff I've done. Uh, for example, in 2017, Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico. Uh, JetBlue is very big in Puerto Rico. And uh, we also have some members of the community from uh, Casa Teatro uh, in Memphis. Uh, Dorimar was uh, one of the big sponsors in the uh, 2017 movement for Hurricane Maria. And having this platform uh, where I'm able to travel, uh, use aircraft from the company, um, I asked the CEO of JetBlue, Robin Hayes, at, at the moment, if I can borrow a, uh, an aircraft. It kind of sounds funny. And I just walk in and say, can I borrow an Airbus? Um, at the time, he said he was, he was all with it. So we actually started... Uh, picking up a lot of stuff in the community. We picked up generators, we picked up food, we picked up a lot of stuff. 
and the plan was that I was going to fly an Airbus from New York empty, fill it up in Memphis, and I was going to fly it straight down to San Juan or to Aponce. Unfortunately, due to logistical events down on the island, we weren't able to get the aircraft going. But uh, Mr. Hayes, the CEO of JetBlue, actually wrote us a check. Uh, I, I believe it was for the amount of $15,000, which paid for the shipment of a container uh, from the Mid-South all the way to Puerto Rico. And that container took, I want to say it was like 30 generators. There was uh, medical supplies, clothing, food. It was, it was crazy. And I've also done that in 2010 with the uh, earthquake in Haiti. Uh, I took a jet full of uh, supplies from Memphis all the way to Port-au-Prince. And um, so, I, like I said, I've always been motivated just to give back. So that's something that I've, it's in my blood, it's, I'm passionate about. It's incredible. And then to have those resources where you could just reach out to, you know, someone at the top tier of JetBlue and say, hey, let me borrow this plane. And then for them to pay the money to ship the containers over there. Uh, what does it mean for you, though, to be able to be someone that a lot of these young kids look at as a role model and also gives them hope that they can be be and do what you're doing? Well, for me, uh, to, first of all, it's, it's an honor just to be able to give back, uh, to, to be able to provide something positive to a community, um, especially in times where, you know, we think that things are just not going the way we would like to see them go. Um, so first of all, you know, to me, it's an honor to be able to join the community, give back. And then working with the, uh, with the youth is just something that, uh, I'm passionate about. So it makes me feel like, uh, I hope that they're learning something from me, first of all, but at the same time, I hope I'm, I'm lighting that fire. So when they achieve what they want, they'd also turn around and say, you know what, I'm going to do the same thing and pay it forward. And, and, you know, they move on to the next generation and so on. And before we wrap things up here, what advice would you give someone that's maybe watching today that's wanting to be in your seat and doing what you're doing? Well, the, the best advice is if you have a dream, pursue it. Um, there's always ways to make things happen uh, financially, time-wise. Uh, you are your biggest uh, setback. So no one's holding you back. We are in the land of opportunity. You know, uh, as a, as a first-generation immigrant, um, I can say that if I did it, anybody can do it. Um, it's, it's all in your head. So if you have a dream, you know, work hard, play hard, and it, it's definitely going to be rewarding. Well, Jaime, I appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule. I know you're coming to us from the hotel in New Jersey because you're on the, on the flight. And you're flying all over the place all the time and a very busy man. So I really appreciate you taking time to join us here and to highlight the great work that you're doing and the way that you're giving back to those locally here in the Mid-South. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. You guys have a good afternoon.